In this episode, I have a Panasonic bookshelf stereo system that both the tape decks and the CD player are broken. And uh, we're going to see if we can get this one going. This is a unit that goes back to about 1992, 93. It was quite popular. Uh, you know, for, for, well, these were really popular for uh, uh, bedroom type stereos that a lot of teenagers had back in the day. Let's uh, see what's wrong with this one. Well, here I have an SACH11. Uh, this is a 1993 stereo, all in one unit that Panasonic made. Hey, look, when I was going through, uh, this would have been the last year I, I ran my company before I shut it down. I used to give these things out. It has my company name on it, so my old company name. But I used to give out these planners, calendar from 2006. That was the last year I ran my company. My, my business partner passed away and I shut down my company and then I changed jobs and well now I'm doing YouTube videos as my video production type work. I haven't been doing my corporate stuff. I still do the odd thing, right? But I still do the odd shoot for, for clients, but I don't do it as much. I used to do it too much full time. Full time in addition to my other jobs. So weekends basically. Uh, this um, system was given to me and I don't know whether it works or not. I'm assuming it probably needs some work because hey it's 1993 and you know the quality of stuff by then was certainly on the decline. So I guess the first thing I'll do is we'll turn this thing on and it's got an E flashing in the display. It's probably because the clock isn't set. I'm, I'm, I'm going to think that the clock has to be set. Clock timer. Okay, I press and hold and clock. Set. Okay. Clock. Set. Okay. I can dial the time in. So we'll just set it to anything. 3.36 just happens to be that that's the time. Okay, clock is set. Let's um, see whether this thing even turns on. Make sure the volume is turned down. Oh, this has got one of those volume controls that turns forever. It has an equalizer on it too. Someone's turned it all the way down to minus 10 dB. We'll start with it set flat. Kind of got a bit of dust on the sink. Power on. Okay, it lights up. It says tape. Let's see if the CD tray opens, which it does. That's a good sign. That means the belts are okay. Um, we'll try the tuner on this thing first. And see if it picks anything up. Now, it says it's got a This is picking up a signal in stereo. It should it should be picking up my test uh, transmitter here. I don't have an antenna on it though. We'll just try, I'll just put a piece of wire on here for an antenna momentarily and see if we get anything. Okay, I got an antenna on here now, and it is picking up my test transmitter. So we know that that part works. Um, AM. Let me get AM on this thing. See if it'll pick up my my test transmitter on 1440 because I don't have an antenna on here, so it might pick that up. Well, the only thing it will pick up with an antenna. I can find the antenna terminals on the back here. Uh, oh, yeah, AM is a loop antenna which I don't have that just plugs in the back. But if I just put my finger there. So it's uh, working for AM as well. Let's go back to FM. I guess the next thing we'll do is we'll see if it can uh, read a CD and then we'll try the cassette deck out. Not necessarily in that order either. Okay, we'll try the tape deck out uh, first. Tape. This has got two decks. It's got a record play deck and it's got a playback only deck. 
Are they both auto reverse or just one? Uh, they're both auto reverse. So this will play both sides. It's filthy. It really, it really needs to be cleaned, but let's see if it works. So deck number one. Uh, I think we have a problem. Deck number one is not doing anything. Okay, so there's a problem there. Deck one is not doing anything. How about deck two? Deck two do anything. And deck two is also dead. So we know the tape deck does not work. So I guess this thing does need to come apart. Let's uh, try the CD player. And it likely also doesn't work. But we'll find out pretty quick. That will determine whether this thing's fixable or whether it's just going to head off to recycling. See, if I, if I can fix this thing, I'll, I'll fix it and sell it. Because I have the speakers and everything for it. And it does not appear to be... I'll play. Let's see if it plays anything. It doesn't appear to be reading the disc. Okay, so both the CD player and the tape is not functional. So uh, we'll take the top off this one and just see what we're looking at on this. These things were always the things that I hated. You know, when I worked in the service business, I just hated these things. These, these all-in-one I call them the teenager stereo because it seemed like back in about 93 that's what every you know that's what every high school kid got was they got one of these for Christmas for their bedroom um, the shop that I worked at uh, sold hundreds of these things not just the Panasonic ones we sold a lot of JVC which we used to call junk very cheap Sold a lot of JVC and a number of Sony's as well. But reliability wise, these things were, blech, they were bad. They were. I like to think the only good thing about these type of units was it saved the parents' expensive stereo from being trashed. They'd give Junior one of these things for their bedroom, and uh, Junior would leave their their nice high-end home system alone. I can tell you stories about some of the things that I saw happen to home stereos. We had one client who had some very pricey CAF speakers. And the speaker came in well, the amplifier was trashed, first of all. Fix the amplifier. It was a, uh, I think it was one of the crappy techniques with the, the output ICs that they, that they had there for a while when, when techniques turned to crap. They used to be a respectable brand back in the 70s, but by the late 80s, they just turned to garbage. Um, I remember, uh, this amp coming in and outputs, the output ICs were, were toast. We replace the output ICs and get the amp working and the client takes it home and he's back a couple days later because see this, these things, these power modules, these were crap. Uh, he's back a couple days later because um, uh, the speakers sound like crap. So we hook up his amp, nope, your amp sounds fine, must be your speakers. He brings his speakers in and the woofers were, were, were trashed, mid-range, trashed, tweeters, 
blown. And I remember ordering these drivers in. And the, the drivers for the woofers were ended up being, they were these oval shaped kefs. Kind of like the Sony APM design. They were a flat driver, but they were oval shaped. And I forget how much they were. Five to six hundred dollars each. And there was two of them in each cabinet. So I forget how much it cost to fix each speaker. It was ridiculous. That the bill was probably close to three thousand dollars because there was two drivers in each cabinet, and there was a mid-range and there was a tweeter. And they're they're all shot. And and the crossover was just blown. Like the parts were capacitors had exploded. The only part of the speaker that wasn't blown was the big heavy oak cabinets. Everything else was trashed. So we ordered all these speakers in and put all the new drivers in, sent them out. About a month later, the guy that uh, owned this, he was a pilot, so he was out of town a lot. And his wife, she also worked for the airline, so she, she was out of town a lot too. So they used to leave Junior and his brother at home. And Junior and his brother, well, he'd have a house wrecking party. They had a big pool and, you know, a lot of money up on the, lipped up on the hill, overlooking the ocean. Big, huge house. And uh, Junior would have a big party. And uh, he trashed the speakers the second time. And the guy comes in and he's livid. He's blaming the amplifier, right? Of, of, of course it was the amplifier that was at fault. It was These speakers are rated like 500 watts, but the amplifier was only rated at 120, and that would be like one cycle driven on one channel. You know, of course it was the amplifier that was at fault. I mean, that's how you blow speakers, having an underpowered amp. But the guy come back after spending all this money, just absolutely livid. You know, And, of course, uh, we just said, well, here, why don't you take your speakers down to whatever the place was speaker city or whatever the place was that we bought the drivers from you can go and yell at them you know we don't set the price on the speakers but we're not giving you new drivers for free if you, you know take it down to them well the guy comes in anyway and he buys a new uh, he buys a new receiver this time he buys a yamaha receiver and uh, next time he's out of town again junior has a few of his friends over they managed to blow the amplifier again. This time they didn't blow the speakers, but they blew the amplifier. It was uh, it was quite comical. So I'll go back to tape. I want to see if this. I don't, I didn't hear any uh, motor sound here at all. So and this has got two independent motors. The belt's not broken. Nothing's not, there's no attempt. The belt is not broken on this thing. It's probably worn because it's old, but it's not it's not broken. The deck is not attempting to even start up. So we may have a power problem on this. I know these units had some issues. Sometimes these regulators here um, would break. Connections would break. But it's not attempting to do anything. We'll just try that CD again and see if it spins. I wonder if it's a reading problem. There's a lot of dust in here, so it could be it could be that the laser itself is just filthy. Because there's an awful lot of dust inside this machine, as you guys probably can see. Okay, I don't see any attempt for the laser to even spin. Or for the disc to even spin, so. I wonder if the laser is just dirty. We'll try cleaning that lens off first. I am intentionally using a CDR because they are harder to they are harder to read.
I don't see any attempt for the disc to even try to spin. Oh, there it goes. It's not reading. It's spinning though. We have some problems here. It's not reading properly. Very good possibility it's the laser is weak on this. I did clean the top surface of the lens, although I haven't used any uh, any cleaning fluid on it, so I just dusted it. Looks like this unit may have come out of a smoker's house. Just from the, the discoloration here. If we look down at the metal here. Yeah, this may have come out of a smoker's house just from just from the discoloration on the metal here. It kind of looks a bit brownish like like nicotine and tar. And smoke is uh, a, 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 an enemy of electronics. Okay, I gotta pull this thing apart. I say these were wonderful units to uh, work on. Um, see if I can get the, the tape decks working. Now, quite often what happens on these tape decks is these ones ha actually have little detector switches that are located up in the top here and they detect if there's a tape in place or not. They're also used to detect what type of tape it is, whether it's a metal tape or whether it's a, uh, a chrome tape and whether the record tab is missing and sometimes these little leaf switches they uh, get dirty especially if they haven't been used for a while and they won't detect there's tape in there so I'm just going to try pressing these switches up manually here and see whether this thing will do anything ah interesting okay what happened there I think we're getting to the right track. I think we got some dirty switches inside here. It's not oh it's not going into mode what right mode I think because the, the cassette compartment's open. Let's just try that. Okay that one's kicking in but it's not it's not working. What about this one? The playback side. Is it switches on this? I think they have the same problem. We have switches in here that are the contacts are dirty. So I'm just going to um, clean these switches. I don't know if I can show you guys where they are, but they're right up in the top here. You can see, if we look in the top here, you can see these little switches, these little micro switches up here. These get they get gummed up and dirty. So I'm just going to uh, Get some cleaner into those switches and see whether that will fix that problem. Because it looks like that's where the problem is on these switches. Yeah, I could take them out, and, but they're a pain. And you, you don't want to get into these decks if you don't have to. These are just a nightmare to take these things apart. But it's a good thing I remembered <laughs> that that's one of the common problems with these was the, the little switches go bad. There's other switches as well that, that cause problems. That, uh, that activate when the mechanisms in certain modes so I may have to end up taking it apart to get at them to clean them. So to take the front off this I have to just first of all undo all these plugs because I'm going to have to drop the faceplate off to get at this to do it properly. So take out those plugs and unplug 
these. So we have to undo this connector here. Notice that the white wire is on the left. We press it in to release that wire. Same with this one. We'll unplug this one as well. This one we just pull. This way I can remove the, the face of the unit and work on the decks and the CD player. Now, the, of course, the problem with this design is that you can't test anything when you've got the unit apart. And that's why I used to absolutely hate working on these things uh, at the shop. These would come in and they would automatically get a huge estimate just because I didn't want to work on them. Because this is the type of thing that somebody would say, oh, I want to put 50 or $60 into it, but don't, don't, I don't want to spend any more than that. I only want to spend 50 bucks to fix it. And, uh, well, of course, the problem being is that there are a lot of work to work on them. Okay, I got one more plug here that I have to undo. So it's another one of these ones where I just push the connector down and the pin is just unplugged like that. Okay, now I can service this CD player is, is again separate, but I can't run the thing. This is the, this one's actually the the uh, cable from the CD player that plugs into into here. I can't run it when it's apart. Actually, I guess I can. I can take the CD player out of this and uh, and plug it into this piece, and I can test that with it out. But um, let's get the tape decks deal with that part first. Okay, next I need to remove the actual deck itself to get at the mechanism, so I'm going to remove the red screws. That way I can remove the actual mechanism and get access to all the little switches that need to be cleaned because I'm, I'm pretty sure that's probably all that's wrong with this is the there's little switches that are, are gummed up. Now if I open the cassette compartments I should be able to lift this deck out. I think I got all the screws. catch on the side here. Got a little catch on this side. You should lift right up. Oh yeah, got to do that. Gonna cut that uh, zap tie. Get the wires out of the way. Okay, there's the deck itself. And the switches that give us trouble on this are these ones here on the top. There's these two and these ones here. All these four switches. Oh, look at all the dirt in here. Might as well clean this out while I've got it apart. Doesn't look like these have ever been used. At least this side. Like I don't see a lot of dirt. I don't see a lot of tape oxide on the, the pinch rollers or anything. And the playback side may have been used on this one. It looks like a bit of dirt on here. But the, uh, the record side doesn't look like it's ever been used. Okay, that's a little better than it was, I guess. Get the uh, air compressor and clear this dust out. Word of caution when you're using an air compressor, watch out where you've left screws. that if I'm not mistaken the switch when I got these things cycling and they were kicking back and forth it's this switch right here that one and that one this is the one that tells the mechanism when the head is up 
and that switch gets dirty and gets noisy. So that causes it to disengage like it was doing. So I'm pretty sure that's the only switches I gotta clean. Is the three here and one, two, three, four, five on this side here. So let's get in here and I'm just going to uh, I brush these. I'll use my I'll use my vacuum tube restoration kit because this comes with some little brushes and stuff that might work quite well for cleaning those contacts. Comes with this little. These are for cleaning uh, tube sockets. But I think this might uh, do the job here on these contacts. Just put this little. It's like a little file. We'll see if I can clean those contacts up a bit. These other switches, we can take them apart. It should just pull apart, I think. I think they come apart. I'm gonna use the direct applicator here. Just put a drop of cleaner into the contact here. And to all these contacts. Get in there. Do the same for all the contacts. So I'm going to put these decks back in here. Before I um, put this together and test it, I want to. I'm going to take a look at this, see whether I can just uh, make this thing work. So that drops in like that and kind of just snaps in. It locks in place. This little catches on either side that holds it in place, so that the red screws can be put back in. So we'll do that. And then I'm going to just take a look at the CD player. We'll do a few things on it. I'll clean the lens a little better. And um, I'll probably take the deck out and see if I can sp spin the motor up on a power supply. Just in case the, the motor bearing is getting kind of dry. Which sometimes happens on CD players. As long as I can make this thing last long enough to sell it to somebody, right? As you can see, the uh, the deck is really, really dusty. first it looks the lens still looks to be pretty dirty it looks like it's got a film on it from from my angle here so we'll get some cleaner and just see if I can clean the top of this lens off a little better yeah it, you can see definitely there was dirt on here
So basically I'm going to remove the deck and I'm just going to use my power supply and I'm going to put some power to the disc motor and just spin the crap out of it for a bit. So what happens a lot of times on these is that, especially if they've been sitting for a while, is that the lubricant gets, uh, the lubricant kind of dries out a bit. And uh, then they just don't spin up to the right speed or have a bit of a drag on them, which causes excessive jitter. And excessive jitter will cause reading problems. Well, you guys heard this thing, how it played. It, it definitely had reading problems. Should blow this out with the air compressor too. My God, this thing's filthy. So, yeah, yeah, it comes out just like that. So this is the the disc motor here. I'm just going to give it a, a couple of volts. I'm not going to give it a lot. I would give it you know, maybe four or five volts to get the thing spinning. I'm going to disconnect the motor first before applying power so that I'm not going to be ending up putting power back into the circuit. There we go. That is now completely disconnected. So now I can apply some power here to my power supply. Get this thing spinning. Five volts. Eight volts. We don't want to take it up much more than about that. So I took it up to about 8.5 volts on my adjustable power supply just to spin that bearing up a bit. And now we'll reconnect it. Gonna take the CD mechanism over to my air compressor and blow all the dust out of it. That looks a little better. A little less dust on here. Can't say the same for the rest of it, but dust on the headphone jack down here isn't gonna hurt anything. Tape deck back in. Much easier. Same with this one. Connect this one here up here as well while it's apart.
Now I just got to connect up the interconnects here on the top. Which are these ones right along here. There's three of them. And power this thing up and see whether it does anything. Okay, that one's working. Reverse. Yeah, that one's working. I have to check this one. Now it'll play it from the beginning. <clears throat> Side two. Deck one, or deck two. If you had two tapes in this unit, you could uh, select which deck you wanted to control. And this is an anisonic. See, it's an anisonic deck. I love how they tried to make this look like components because they put Panasonic stereo integrated amplifier, synthesized tuner, stereo double cassette deck. CD player. Looks like there was another Panasonic label that's broken off here and another one from up top here. That's what that was. So they were trying to make it look like components when everything was all really in one piece of, piece of crap, right? It's got super bass. Okay, let's test the CD player. Can't uh, play this for more than uh, seven or eight seconds because uh, I don't want to get uh, nailed with copyright. So we'll play a few tracks off this thing and see how this works. So I'm gonna let it play here for a few minutes and we'll, we'll pop back in and check it in a few. Well, it's playing. I'll let this play for a while and see how it continues along here. Maybe we got lucky on this one and just needed to have the laser clean. We're now up to track number six. Playing so far, so good. Well, here we are, track 10 is just finished. Now track 11 starting. I think we can call this one a success. The unit is playing CDs properly. Both tape decks are now working properly. Uh, only thing I haven't done yet is I haven't done a record test, so maybe we will do that and uh, see how well it records. Here it is playing a CDR. sounding bad. I should hook up the original speakers that came with it and make sure that they're not blown because I'm running it on my test speakers here. I'll do that before I'm finished with it though. So I'm just recording off the radio here in the reverse direction off my uh, media player. tape here and I'll just uh, re I think I rewind it with this one okay rewind the tape again we're playing in the reverse direction 
Or over here, reverse. That wasn't where I started recording. You should start the second here. There's where they recorded. So tape deck records and plays. So the unit also has an auxiliary input, so I'm going to try the auxiliary. This is with the original speakers. I haven't put the top on it obviously yet, but let's see how it sounds with the uh, feeding it through auxiliary with the original speakers. These speakers don't sound bad. They sound very good. For a small bookshelf speaker, these things sound excellent. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, everything seems to be working on this. Radio is working, tape decks are working, CD player is working, auxiliary input is working. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.